院长尚新教授呢，哎，给我们呃主讲。那尚新教授呢，他目前是上海大学外国学院的院长，之前呢在我们的这个上海海事大学也担任院长，最近呢到上海大学。那尚院长呢是呃在肝研究与原动力方面呢，近多年的一个顶尖的学者。所以今天呢，我们非常高兴有这个机会呢，请他来给我们做一个交流。那张院长其实介绍了很多，时间关系我不一一说了。那他也担任很多的社会职务，比如说是我们中国英汉比较与研究会的常务理事，也是副秘书长。那这是个一级学会，所以在整个外语界呢，应该说影响巨大的一个啊、呃、学会。同时呢，他也。在国际国内的这个学术期刊上发表论文也有五六十篇，也有多部的译著、专著等等等等。呃，他也主持了多个这个国家社会项目、专注的项目，我就不一一说了，还是把宝贵的时间呢交给我们商院长，大家掌声欢迎。尊敬的学院长、各位老师，大家上午好。呃、uh, ，I feel much honored to be given a chance to share some of my small discoveries uh, in teaching the course of、uh, translation of Shanghai style culture.、Uh, in the past three years, I've been teaching this course, and、uh, Professor Tens.、Um, Talk is more theoretical, and mine is more practical. Okay, so、uh, let me start with.、Uh, so、um, the talk、uh, has three divided into、uh, four parts: introduction, cultural text, the features, and AI performance in translating cultural texts. And then I will talk on hidden obstacles for the AI translation, and then what human transcendence lies. Okay, and then、um, I give the conclusion. So,、uh, in the age of AI intelligence, now、uh, know very well. You know,、uh, first we have the Google translation. And then, or of course, in the Beijing translation follow. And then we get the、uh, ChatGPT, right? And then recently, we now I'm not sure I've not ever used this、um, Gemini. So I'm not sure what the situation in Macau is, but in Shanghai or maybe in mainland China, people, you know, talk a lot about this trend. Then, then panic goes around. So people are afraid that one day, you know, the education of translators will diminish, and there is that kind of、um, guess, saying prediction, saying, well, maybe the career, the profession of translation, will diminish very soon, and among the top ten professions, but would be today. Uh, you know,、um, I would di diminish one day. So,、um, so my purpose of teaching this course is to dis- try to discover, to make clear whether this will be true. And the material I use is the Shanghai style cultural text. And this,、um, you know, started、uh, three years ago. And first, I'm going to make clear what cultural text. And its the feature is actually maybe you know this very well. Culture and civilization. What、uh, culture and civilization is defined? You know, it's by、um, a Sir Edward Bennett Tyler. So he has a definition saying, well, culture taking this wide ethnographic sense is that complex whole which includes knowledge, 
belief, art, morals, laws, custom, in any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. So, culture is the creation of human beings within unique times, areas, ethics, referring to the whole models of society in cultural beliefs, tradition, system, and values. And what a cultural text is, it refers to a text that gives a description, illustration, explanation, or analysis of what an aspect for example, history, philosophy, literature, local opera, film, music, and art, etc. It's a kind of, of a particular culture, this life. So it does not refer to those texts themselves, but refers to the explanation, analysis, or description of those, uh, those for example, uh, texts of genres. So, <clears throat> And there are different classifications of uh, different types of texts. Uh, I say, well, there are three uh, types of criteria, usually. One is the content-based text in typology. For example, literary text versus non-literary, by Gideon Mark. And also literary versus a pragmatic, mainly by Fong uh, and also uh, Putin and, you know, uh, in, uh, in 2023, the uh, paper published in uh, Chinese translated journal. And also, uh, we have the category of function-based text typology, and it is a kind of classification that will continue, like expressive, informative, evocative, different kinds of text that has have such kind of different functions. And also, I say, um, it's my classification is called AI translability based text typology. Uh, in my point of view, I think AI uh, deals with the pragmatic texts very well. And maybe on the other extreme is the literary text. You know, it's most difficult for the eye because we, we know that literary translation usually is the translation between the lines or understanding literary text is the understanding between the lines. So, <clears throat> in the middle is the cultural text. And it's not that difficult. It's also part of it is, you know, uh, related to something sophisticated. So, that's the... <clears throat> What the definition and classification. And the features of a cultural text, I think, um, basically, I, you know, based on uh, Professor Galen's classification, um, <clears throat> Professor Brendan S. Galen is the uh, linguist in, at McGill University. Okay. So he classified context into setting and context. So setting is that kind of place and conditions in which something happens or exists. It's a very simple definition. But it's usually the, 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 the feature of it, it usually refers to something that is beyond or outside of the event itself. So it is exophoric, we call it. And it has something to do with, you know, in, in the, on the dimensions of temporal order, spatial order, and also role. Right? What, who are involved in such kind of event? Sometimes also, you know, depends on um, the ex, ex offer. You know. For example, if a note is accidentally picked up by John. John, maybe a person you know, I know, right? But the note says, let's meet at 6.30 at an old place. Okay. But this one, you know, let us, us is defined by who? Of course not John. But if John take it seriously and go to the, that place at 6.30, he sure will meet a person, but 
not one person actually wants to meet, right? Or no, he was not, he is not the person that is wanted. Okay. So uh, that is uh, what setting means. And context. Context has something to do with the dogma. So the elements that are related uh, within the text. So the context of an instance, so now utterance, are the other utterances which precede or succeed the peculiar instance. For example, he say in this uh, sentence, Bill celebrated his birthday last week in Shanghai. In fact, he comes to Shanghai Lanyon to celebrate his birthday. So we have a three pronouns, like uh, he is, he, his. And these pronouns are understood, you know, you have to refer back to the antecedents, Bill, to understand this sentence. Right? You so it is called the context. That means the word is interpreted or understood, you know, in terms of the context. The, the, the text that is before it or after it. Okay. So, context of phenomena usually include, you know, an, of, an offering, substitution, ellipsis, repetition, and this is something already talked about in functional linguistics, right? So, how to text translation is you know, if we uh, consider the elements of culture, text types, we say it refers to any text translation which is sensitive to cultural as well as to linguistic factors. Such kind of sensitivity might take the form of either presenting TL recipient, recipients with the transparent text, which informs them about elements of the source culture or of finding target items which may in some way be considered to be culturally equivalent to the ST items they are translated. This is a definition I adapted from uh, Shadow Works and Koi 1997 and it has the translation of Wen Pa Wen Ben Fan Yi Shi Zhi Shi Ma Okay So, now let me let, let me come to the brief, uh, something uh, uh, to brief on Shanghai Xia culture. So you know what everybody you know knows about the city of Shanghai. Okay? So Shanghai Xia culture is actually also called Haipei culture sometimes by Chinese people. Haipei two opposite uh, terms or, or names. <coughs> And it refers to culture of Shanghai, including food, clothing, buildings, fashion, and language. And it started actually uh, since when Shanghai was forcibly, you know, opened okay, in 1840s, right, uh, after the Opium War. So the feature of Shanghai style culture usually includes such kind of features like uh, diversification, the pursuit of excellence and innovation. Uh, so, the teaching materials I use in my class is Jin Zhe Shang Hua, Hai Pei Wen Hua. The material, the teaching materials. And usually it's actually, it, it is written in Chinese, but I ask the students, you know, I send them the, 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 the work of translating parts of the, this book you know, into English with uh, either Baidu, DPL, ChatGPT, uh, Wenxi and the students make different, you know, APPs into um, the, the translation of the, this material. So, uh, after students' translation, we try to discuss and try to preserve AI translation of cultural texts. What kind of you know, difficulty, what are successful? Okay, in terms of the, the, the translation. And what are the difficulties or obstacles? You know? And then to look at 
the space where translators came to in um, uh, beyond the AI transformation. So, um, <clears throat> for me, I'm going to use the uh, better AI, and also sometimes the Wen Xin Yan, you know, because it is um, made most popular in mainland China, right? And some students, they use ChatGPT. But we compare, we have discussions, and we compare the translation results by ChatGPT, Google Translation, DP, L, and you got, of course, and also better. More or less, they are the same. You, it, maybe by new translation, AI translation, you know, uh, has some advantages in terms of translation, translating Chinese into English. Okay. So, <clears throat> we um, analyze from two different dimensions. One is the cook text. The dimension of cool text. Within the dimension of cool text, what kind of problems would probably occur in AI translation of Shanghai uh, style culture text? And also the other dimension is the setting. What kind of um, what are the possible obstacles for AI performance in translation? So let's look at some of the. Um, <clears throat> problems or obstacles we, we, we found in uh, discussion. One is the inconsistency problem. Um, Haipai文化, are the terms that are used most often, you know, by people when talking about uh, Shanghai culture. Right? Just now, uh, Professor Deng talked about Fanhua, right? It's, it's one of them, you know. So, the terms for Shanghai Taiwanese, we have different kinds of translation results and different kinds of results. And then we had a discussion what kind of translation results are most you know, appropriate, appropriate. So, we have, for example, Haipei uh, culture, one type, one version, and the other, Shanghai culture. And Shanghai Xiao culture, okay, sea school culture, and many marine school culture, all kinds of, uh, I, I cannot remember them all, but maybe eight or nine different kind of translation results, but given by AI. You know. So, and then let's decide what are the best. Okay, so we uh, finally decided that we maybe. Uh, for, for us, for translators, we have that kind of judgment, saying, well, Shanghai Xiao culture is the best, and then next is the little trans the uh, uh, translation of Haipei culture, okay? You know, goes after the, the Shanghai Xiao culture, and then Shanghai culture. Because Shanghai style means that it's a kind of pattern, a kind of model. You know, and it just does not belong to Shanghai itself, but belongs to the whole world, Shanghai Shan. If we, if we talk, we say Shanghai culture, when well, maybe it's only, you know, destined within the city of Shanghai. It's, it's not that case. So, um, when we do this, we find whether Haipei Wenhua, Haipei Wenxue are translated differently, even within one APP's performance. For example, back to four, a uh, We give different uh, results at different places, different um, time of translation. So, um, we, we can see here, you know, with different uh, names. With next uh, we have also these different names. Right? Shanghai School, Shanghai School Literature, Shanghai School Writers, and Shanghai School. But Shanghai School, we have Shanghai School, actually we do have Shanghai School at Shanghai, right? But it uh, does not mean a high tech culture, a Shanghai culture, Shanghai Munghua, Haipei Munghua. So <clears throat> these um, translation uh, contrasts 
you know, tell us uh, what kind of problem uh, the AI has. And also, uh, the inconsistency also shows up within one APP in terms of a book. Uh, for example, Wang Anida, talking book. And for Bayou's translation, very closely two uh, paragraphs. One version is some of internal regret. Okay? And the other version is the sum of everlasting regret. Okay. So it shows that AI cannot make a judgment whether the two terms should be in consistent. Okay. So that's uh, maybe does not have judgment at all, but only statistical result. And AI also has gender confusion, uh, and a foreign vacancy, and some many more uh, problems. For example, here is a team for team written by uh, Dan Ayan. It has a paragraph like this. Team for team draw a and the AI translation is Chichao, who was the wife of the disabled, wanted to love, but could not love, almost spent 30 years in the Jiang family like a madman. Like a madman, you know. In Chinese, we don't have to distinguish between male and female. But in English, in an English context, context, you know Chicho is a woman, right? You have to say mad woman, right? Or or maybe some other uh, word, but you cannot say mad man, right? So it's a kind of gender confusion that AI cannot do. Okay. So uh, next is an aphoric vacancy given example. Tao Chicho is within the same text. And here we have um, Tao Chichou changed into a bad mother and a bad mother-in-law after his separation. Who's the separation? Right? And you know, a lot of evil things. So it has actually two problems here. One is the vacancy, the AI cannot recognize it. Okay. So it cannot make the judgment smell the gender of the Tao Chi Xiao, male or female. Right? So, and then it gives the uh, uh, such kind of result, his separation. Of course, we know it's one, right? It should be her separation. Okay. And then, also, the repetition problem. Usually, we say, in Chinese, we are, we, Chinese language tends to repeat something. Okay? To, or can prefer repetition. But for English, repetition is usually avoided. So here, a bad, a bad mother and a bad mother-in-law, actually, we should only have one bad, right? So if we put it into colloquial English, bad mother and mother-in-law, okay, so, and we have no problem like this, it's uh, from, uh, let me see the time. Yeah. yeah. Ten minutes. Okay. <clears throat> this is a Shanghai uh, local opera, Hu Ji, a book. This book is called Lu Yacheng. This is a book about Lu Yacheng. This is a book about Lu Yacheng. This is a book about Lu Yacheng. 
，终将家产全部输尽，甚至在人贩子教唆之下，啊、呃，逼卖自己，啊、呃，妻子在。郑小七岳母前来看望女儿，苦心劝导，陆景执意卖妻，岳母无奈，拿出一百银元将女儿买回娘家。结果陆又将银元全部输光，深夜回家，人聚财供，鬼更交怨，便悬梁自尽。那么这里边，这些标红的部分，啊 ，red label parts， 你知道吗？啊 ，all the problems in content that I translate。The translation is: He even forced his wife to gamble again. 他逼卖逼卖妻子再赌。哎呀，这上去把它理解成了是什么呢？逼着妻子再去赌博。实际上，他是把妻子要逼着卖了，然后再去赌。所以，这个是一个啊、呃，一个一个很大的一个问题，是吧？ And it happened that his mother-in-law came to visit her daughter and tried to persuade her not to do so. 我们在这里面看到，苦心劝导，路径质疑，卖妻，苦心劝导，苦心劝导谁呢 ？In Chinese, we don't have to mention it, right? But for English, we have to make clear who that position should be. You know, feel. So here, this is very interesting. He is unable to judge correctly. This is a complex problem. We humans are able to understand it, but there is no problem. So he says, "To persuade, to persuade her not to do so. Actually, should be persuade Lu Yaqing him, right, not to do so. Not to take money." Then the next sentence: "At night, when he returns home, the people are gathered to watch him gamble again, to gamble again, to gamble again." 由于这个句子汉语当中物句非常常见，啊、哦，要站像状元你所说的，要站到一百以上，对吧？那么这个时候，对于我们汉族汉语的这个 native speakers 来说，理解上没有问题，到底是谁是一个问题。但是 ，AI translation problems occurs， 它就出问题了，它就默认是。没有注意的情况下，他就默认是 I。When I returned home late in the night, I went to 财控，这也是错的，对吧 ？Regretted paying it, and then hanged myself。是陆亚辰，对吧？自己人去财控了，然后呢，上吊自杀。而且这个 hang 用的也有问题，就是 hang 是指已经怎么样？已经死了。对不对？所以他这里面用词实际上都是有问题的。所以呢，我们就我们在课上讨论的时候呢 ，we give a better post-edited version. When he returned home that night, his wife was gone and he became penniless. He regretted it and hated himself painfully. Then he hung himself, or he manages to hang himself. Maybe maybe try to hang himself. 哎、anyway, ，呃，就是就是我们在 post editing 这个空间上是非常大的空间。另外一个是时态问题，在 context 里面的时态问题。Case problem， 呃，举一个例子，大概啊、呃，时间关系啊，就是他说，一九二八年九月，有流量五主编的《五鬼电视在上海问世，主要撰稿人包括石哲存、戴望舒、呃、杜恒、徐霞村等等他们。然后这个。翻译的时候，当有明确的上文时间提示词的时候，它是翻译是没问题的。不、哦，这个时态 ，the tense is used correctly， 但是离开了这个 immediate 时间提示词这个下文就会出问题，它就会默认一般见惯词。所以他说。Uh, in September 20, 1928, the drawing edited by Liu Nao was published in Shanghai. Full stop. The sentence, the sentence is over. When it is repeated again, it will have a problem. It will say, "The main contributors include so and so. They are, and with modern Western modernism is their initial goal." 那这个时候他就
出问题，这就是一个 cool pants， 这个 pants problem 出现的问题。当然 ，pants problem 不仅仅是 cool pants 问题 ，setting 也会出这样的问题。那我们待会儿会看看关于 setting 的问题，就是这个 setting， 呃，除了 convoluted word problems 的 setting 之外，还有 pants confusion， 啊 ，linguistic habits 语言的习惯问题，还有一些。这个望文生义的一些问题都是属于 setting 的问题。这样，我们来看两个例子的这个、这个、这个 cultural loaded words， 因为大家比较熟悉关于 cultural loaded words， 特别是这个扶正，就是在曹在这个《金锁记》里面，啊、呃，曹七巧的儿子结婚之后呢，第一个会跟他妈妈给逼死。然后呢，他儿子呢，常来就这个跟一个佣人相好了。佣人相好之后呢，这个一年之后被扶正。我们中国人都理解扶正是什么意思？哎，正式是吧？扶正。但是我们到了英语之后，他这个是个 cultural n e w o r 他是处理不了。他说 ，Who was at the right? Who was at the right? 这个。就完全是，嗯，就是牛头不对马嘴，是吧？第二个，我们来看这个过去是以表现现代生活为主的戏剧，其表现首先接触戏剧传统，表现特色即唱、作、演、舞，对吧？那么这几个都是属于过去特有的，当然京剧也有这些东西，但是过去它有自己的特色，哦、嗯。那么唱、作、演、舞这些东西都是有特殊的含义。那么这里说 singing, doing, reading, and dancing， 呃，我们讨论一下的这些词的用法，其实都是有问题，这些用法都是有问题。比如说最简单的这个做，显然不是 doing， 对吧？至少应该是 acting 这样的一个一个一个翻译的。所以，呃，就是文化覆盖词是它的一个很大的一个障碍。啊，还有呢，就是人民，对吧？这个人民，我们汉语的人民，民的是什么？字是什么？号是什么？这些东西，英语除了一个 name 之外，它翻译不出来别的，啊，就是，呃，呃，问题，啊，然后还有它的一些，这个，特别的一些，啊，对子戏啊，上手下手，一生一旦，丑，串链条如意头，手面略发式，八仙式。所有这些都是沪剧当中的一些 cultural loaded words， 但是这些东西它几乎是没有办法处理正确的，啊，没有办法处理。对，呃、um, ，AI translations、uh, results， 啊，类似的语言。And tense confusion 也是，我就刚才讲了 ，good tense 当中有 tense problem， and setting also tense confusion。就是一旦我们一讲到文化，近代上海文化的时候。它的一个基本的 setting， 大的 setting 就已经决定了是 in the past， in the past。所以这个时候它出现的问题基本上都是，我但我们拿到书看到书名近代，那我就知道这是过去的事情。所以它在在这样一个大的 setting 里面，这个我不知道 AI 能不能够以后通过设定参数的形式来处理这个问题，啊，基本上都是啊错的，呃。Oh, oh, uh, I will move quickly here. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is the problem. 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 Yeah, this is the Another one is the literal mindedness， 一些望文生义的问题。比如说，林语堂曾经在民国时期办了一个杂志，叫《论语》，啊，那么这个时候，哎呀，他是没法识别的，啊，就是全部翻译成 a n a l y s e of Confucius。我们知道 a n a l y s e of Confucius 就是《论语》，是吧？都是那个。还有一些作家的翻译，名字名字的翻译，矛盾翻译成了 Contradictory m i d n i g h t 是吧？这个都是，呃，望文生义了。还有关于地名的处理，它也是会遇到问题。比如说这里面的，我们知道上海、苏州、河北的闸北西塘家庙
。那么这个时候他没办法判别这个是一个上海的一个街道的一个名称，是吧？他就把它处理成了 West t i n j a i n 甲北、河北、苏州、上海，啊，这个是，就是，呃，网络世界的一个非常，也是一个非常典型的这个例子，啊，其他的包括比如说您在讲到绘画艺术的时候，这个说凝练老辣的偏锋、逆风的笔类。线条中记录着梅花与夏目雪中开的战斗豪情，这个展开动画，它具有这个爱国情怀。那么这个时候，它这个偏锋、笔类其实都是绘画艺术当中的这个术语，或者叫 c o u t u r e loaded words。这个时候，它就是按字来来来翻译了，完全就是不呃对不上的。他说是这个，呃，叫什么？呃。呃，年年老大的偏锋叫 side spicy side front， 啊，这个你啊逆风的品类叫 the anti front rush t i m e 所以这个翻译出来的东西基本上是啊，一个是不正确，另外一个是西方人可能也没看懂，对吧？所以这个还有也是我们兄弟，比如说互拍绘画的三雄，这三雄其实指的是猪熊、獐熊和人熊，是吧？那么这个时候，他就翻译成 three bears， and known as the three bears in Shanghai。那么这个也是，啊、嗯，呃，存在非常大的一个问题。还有就是语言，呃，习惯的这个障碍，我觉得可能对，呃，对，对 AI 来说就是 potential barriers。比如说，汉语当中喜欢重复这种表达方法，我们刚才提到了，英语是一定是 anaphora， 一定是 anaphora。这个从我们从阅读一些作品，比如说朱克清的《父亲的背影》，这个背影当中，说父亲怎么样，父亲怎么样，父亲怎么样，是吧？这个一定是重复型的。所以到了那个，就是圣经里的合本，圣经的合本，这个刚开始他说 God 怎么怎么样，然后说 He 如何如何 ，He 如何如何 ，He said Let there be light， 呃 ，Let there be light， 是吧？那就有光。然后到了。香港一本和合本的时候，从头到尾全部是神说要有光，神说怎么怎么样，这很好，等等，就是这是两种不同的语言习惯。但是 AI 它在处理的时候，它会局限于文本来进行处理这些这些东西，啊，这个是一个，这啊这里呃时间关系啊，这个例子大家呃扫一眼就是呃重复的问题非常。Design for money, arrive by t o u c h i n You feel like design for money, ah? Design for money, design for money, ah. 然后是 is melody beautiful, performs modern, ah, and beautiful, 是吧？我们说优美动听，这是没问题的。我们也感觉不到这种重复是重复，但是也感觉不到重复。但是英语它翻译的时候就是 is beautiful and beautiful， 是吧？这个就是啊。有问题，是吧 ？OK， 嗯、um, ，那么这个同样这样的问题 ，rapidly rapidly 啊，重复的出现，都是对英语的口语表达都是嗯不对的啊。我们啊 ，So， 嗯、uh, ，hidden obstacles for AI translation is I think， 嗯、um, ，in terms of setting， the setting has the limited sharing product。Okay, but it cannot be shared within a particular group, community, or culture, and AI cannot deal with this. Okay, cannot be part of it. Secondly, a setting changes the passage of time. Only imaginative power, owned by human beings, can restore it, and AI seems not to be there. And in terms of cortex. A context is own cohesive logic. Uh, um, we know cohesion, coherent. We, we know all about this, but this anyway, it's it's, it's logical. Anyway, it's somewhere within the the context. But AI only knows about statistical uh, analysis or result. So. Um, <clears throat> 
And secondly, a test requires consistency, which AI does not care about. Whether it's consistent, the AI seems not to, not to care about. And forcing the human consent. From the discussion we just mentioned, you know, we said, um, or not, that was uh, uh, <clears throat> given by Blaise Pascal, a French uh, philosopher and also a mathematician, right? said, man is a we that thinks. So man thinks rather than computes. Uh, this is uh, what I said, right? Man thinks rather than computes. And so AI will encounter problems in such kind of um, areas for pragmatic text, maybe AI can deal with it very well. You know, for cultural text, only partially, you know, good enough by AI. It does not have the kind of full capability to deal with the safety. And for literary text, maybe, I, I don't think AI has the potential. You know, it, at, at least for, my, for me, okay, or maybe a generation, you know, uh, like maybe, you know, the, the, um, we think literary translations are far beyond the AI capability. So, in terms of how translators will be cultivated, we think, you know, uh, in 2019 also Professor Lee published a book in uh, a published paper, also mentioned about high literacy requirements in terms of the uh, uh, translators and interpreters' education. And um, the AI. Here, you know, I think it puts forward a kind of a higher requirement for uh, translators' education. And the space for our education, for our, you know, <coughs> training of translators is the post-editing capability. <laughs> and based on that kind of higher literacy and, you know, as students or the, the candidates of translators should be educated in the uh, area of, in the field of post editing. And my conclusion is <clears throat> that let us be optimistic, human intelligence, okay? Embrace artificial intelligence and waste no time on pragmatic translation training. And let us make a higher literal requirements for post editing in translators. Uh, education. Uh, these are the major references. Okay, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Ah, we very much thank the Sun Yuan Zhang. Uh, with about forty minutes of his time, we shared a very interesting and interesting topic. I think in terms of accuracy, it is indeed. 僧多的例子呢，给我们阐述了，就是说，呃，人工智能仅仅能做的，以及它不能做的，以及对我们大家学习语言、学习翻译的这一块呃，的启示是什么？我们未来的方向在哪里？我想，嗯、呃，我们首先再次以掌声感谢张院长的演讲。那、呃、谢谢。看看因为时间关系。So, if we have a quick question, we'll, we'll ask a question here. If not, then we'll just conclude. Any quick question? Yes. Oh, Li Xinyuan. Oh, um,
or say are like the challenges that they are put on the translation profession. Um, and what some of that does would be a kind of bargaining power that translators would have against technology. Um, technology is evolving very fast. Um, no stopping. Um, so what I would say, something like this, if they haven't published, I wonder where they should go. Should they be used as a kind of bargaining power against uh, AI, or very quickly use it to enrich AI? And that would be something that uh, we could we could look at. Um, to my horror, just now I checked a few examples that um, you gave. And uh, very quickly use ChatGPT before um, and tested tested ChatGPT before uh, with these examples. And uh, to my horror, uh, ChatGPT before had already overcome a few of these ob obstacles. Okay. How did they manage to do that? So I was wondering, could it be that someone had already seen your <laughs> paper and uh, and ChatGPT very quickly got hold of it <laughs> and then it categorized it so beautifully. And AI, and that helps AI to solve this problem. It's evolving every day. Yes, yes. Oh. 那其实也不是真的问题，还是交交换一下想法。所以我我想这样，因为时间关系，我们就不在这里这个继续讨论。因为这个话题大家讨论一下，可能再讨论一小时都都都没有东西谈。嗯，所以那这样，我们今天的时间是人文学院的，我们欢迎我们上海大学的这个访问团来我们这儿交流。呃，我们先是一场这个。这个学科建设方面的一个交流，然后我们两三演讲，我刚才曾部长跟咱们三个不做两个不同话题，这个演讲，我们应说带来很多可以思考的东西，这个讨论的就会继续延续下去。我们下面的两校之间的交流，两院之间的交流也都会继续下去，对吧？这个这个研究话题可以继续延伸。那我们最后呢，还是以掌声感谢两位讲者精彩演讲。谢谢好，那我们谢谢大家今天早晨参与今天的这个呃演讲，感谢大家。